Definitely. Thank you for plugging that for the people out there. If you don't know what that is, go check out umc.com right now. Let's talk about Friday, 1995, 12 years old. I see this movie. See Craig throwing the cereal in the box and having no milk and throwing the water on it. It's just classic movie. Then there's Miss Parker. God damn, we little kids, just our imaginations running wild with Miss Parker. Oh, that's right. Oh. With such icons, you talk about Ice Cube, Chris Tucker, John Witherspoon, Regina King, Nia Long. The list goes on and on. Talk about it. How was that experience, Doug? Well, uh, I'll take you back a little bit. Um, and having been on The Price is Right, which I was on that show, um, I got a call from my agent once again. She said, Kathleen, she said, um, I got a phone call and from um production company and they're doing a movie. It's called Friday. And she said, Ice Cube, he saw you on The Price is Right. He knew you as a model on the show. He said, and I want that black lady. I didn't never have a name. I'm going to tell you on the price. But I was always the black lady. <laughs> That's okay. Or, and then he said, that, that sister, I want that sister uh, from the price is right to play Miss Parker. So I'm, you know, she said, uh, you have to go in for a little audition. It was actually just me and a few other women that auditioned. And I pretty much had to roll down. What could I say? You know, I learned a little bit about it. So, you know, I did, I got hired for the role and, it, it was just wonderful experience, but it was fun, but it was so loose. F. Gary Gray, you know, that was his first uh, movie that he'd done, uh, film. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we'd done a lot of videos and what have you, but he just gave us so much creative freedom. And there were some things he definitely gave Ice Cube and Chris Tucker to say and do. And at first, I, I'm going to tell you, I don't think I've ever said this, but at first, at first, I was a little offended by Chris Tucker saying Miss Parker is a hoe or something. He was throwing in some things. I'm like, oh, is she really a hoe, Miss Parker? I thought she was just a sexy next door neighbor and stuff. But he, th they did take a few things out that he was saying during the reading. But you know, the more I think about it, of course, look back at it, Miss Parker was a little sexy how but you nobody know, need to say that it was kind of like a given, you know, up and down. And she knew what she was doing with the sexy shorts on and everything. A lot of that stuff they said was very much ad lib. Even when I came out of the house, when my husband Tony caught me and Bernie Mac in the house, mm -hmm. my clothes, I said, "Honey, we were just praying, baby. We were just praying." Oh, I, you know, I made that up. He, he just, just the the creativity that we were all allowed to have. It really made that movie very special and a lot of other things were just thrown in and made up it just worked the characters just worked everybody was just perfectly cast and so many uh big names have come out of that they people didn't start out on that near long and everything with the name big names but as time had evolved and, and regina king and everybody just really that set a great little platform for everybody just to go on to bigger and better things for you, I tell you. So it was quite an, an incredible run and still is, you know, I mean, people know me from that all the time. There were women and people doing spoofs of me and Maria, Anna Maria Halsford all the time on Instagram. I'm looking at that almost every day. Everybody's trying to be Miss Parker. It's just so exciting. And, and when I meet guys that either know me from being Miss Parker or uh, what have you, and they, they don't realize that I'm Miss Parker, when they do find out, it is like, they you, you can't believe they act like I was the fourth coming. I mean, the Lord Jesus just came down. It, it's so funny, you know, and I really, I, I love that. Um, it's, it, and I never get tired of hearing people say, hi, Miss Parker. Hi, Miss Parker. Hi, boys. They still call me Miss Parker, and I'm okay with it. I'm glad they call me Miss Parker. <laughs> did, did you uh, guys have any idea when you were making a movie that would be such a hit? When you were no, I don't think anybody had, n nobody really realized the magnitude of this movie or the film when we were shooting, how it was going to be or end up. I mean, it it just took off. And you know, people tried to uh, emulate it afterwards, a couple of movies come out and tried to do it. But, and even when they did uh, Friday, the second one, mm -hmm. that was terrible, terrible. Mm -hmm. That was the worst. Even the third one they did was okay. Uh, that was better, but the second one, that was, you know, 
it's it's hard to really uh, go back and try to top the first thing you do, especially in movies, you know, with a series of sequels and prequels. It, it's really kind of tough to do that. So uh, they have all, obviously, you guys might have known by now, talked about doing the last Friday. And Ice Cube was hoping to have it done to do it before our very dear friend John Weatherspoon died. Yeah. And the problem is, and we did kind of find out during John's funeral, Ice Cube said that um, the production company, um, uh, Lionsgate, who owns the rights, uh, he gave them a, a couple of uh, scripts and they gave it back. They said, nope, go back to the drawing board. I don't know what the script was about. I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, he kind of said we would all be in it. But I don't know. Somebody said they were going to bring back uh, Mike Epps and uh, uh, little, what's his name? Uh, whoever else was DC. in the other one. Don, huh? Don D.C. Curry? No. Chris uh, Tucker? No. No, Chris, we definitely, yeah, Chris got Chris got to be in. Chris was yeah. going to be in. But I, I don't know what the script is like. I don't have a clue. So I, I did tell him and gave him some ideas. I said, you know what? One thing you really need to do is when Miss Parker comes back, they need to have a definite Bernie lookalike. Bernie Mac lookalike is my yeah. child. The little kid out there looked just like Bernie Mac and said, oh, this is me and my, my husband, Mr. Parker's baby. Like, right. You know, that's Bernie Mac's baby. <laughs> he liked that idea. He thought that was really cool. So, uh, you know, those kind of things are happening. But I, I don't, DJ Poole, he and Poole trying to pull it together. So it's anybody's guess as to when it might happen. But we have hope it happens fairly soon. Can you give us a little bit of a funny behind the scenes moment? You're working with AJ Johnson, Chris Tucker, John Witherspoon. You got comedians galore on that set. But Was you know the odd thing work? about it, we all never worked, really worked together. Oh, we wow. never had the opportunity to work and be in the same scenes. A lot of us didn't. I didn't anyway. And um, I just worked with Anna Maria Horsford, mm -hmm. Craig's mama, and of course Ice Cube and Chris Tucker. Mm -hmm. And um, Tony Cox, Mr. Parker. Now, Tony and I are still really great friends. We still talk to this day. We're very good friends. So we play bid whist and cards together and hang out a little bit, you know. Uh, but uh, it, that day I worked. That's pretty much all that, you know, aside from, I, I think I said Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac and I became pretty good friends and what have you, too. Uh, but other than that, I, I rarely ever talked to Cube. I, I, I saw him maybe once or twice, and then at John's uh, funeral, John Witherspoon's funeral. Mm -hmm. And Chris Tucker, I see him every now and then. I love to play golf. Mm -hmm. I'm a golf fanatic, and I play in a lot of the celebrity golf tournaments. And I see Chris at some of the tournaments, like Cedric the Entertainer will have tournaments, and uh, my friend football great James uh, Jim Brown. So. I see him every now and then, and I saw him at the funeral. You know, so it, I, I wish I had had the opportunity to meet and uh, work with them all. But um, John Weatherspoon, he's oddly enough married to one of my very dear girl, good girlfriends, Angela Robinson. She's a model. She and I modeled, modeled together, so I kind of knew him through her. And uh, Regina King, I did, I did, I was on the set the day Regina King was there. Regina and I became pretty decent friends at some point a long time ago of course i've lost contact with her but uh and then uh now who is my really good bff sister girlfriend is felicia bye felicia oh, wow. yeah. angela means yeah. she and i we never had worked together but oddly enough we did the billy griffin form of miracles he has a, a podcast it's called the grooviness and he had me on there and Angela at the same time. And that's when I really kind of first met her. Uh, I mean, I seen her at the premiere when we first did the show uh, movie. Actually, she was pregnant back then. But I, we, I never really knew her like that. I never met her like formally. And, and this was about maybe three years ago, just recent, really. And she and I have become the best, best buddies. And I just love and adore her so dearly. She's a real sweetheart. That's one person you need to have on the show as well, Angela. We're going to work on that. Definitely. Yeah. I want to ask you, did you get any more opportunities or what were some of the opportunities you got after making Friday? Yes, I did, actually. Um, 
I was in, I have to go back chronologically. Well, I've done some things before that. Before that, I did Harlem Nights. Mm-hmm. And before that, I did, an, I starred in a movie called uh, uh, Perfume. I was the lead in there uh, called uh, Vashti. It was pretty much all black cast. It was a great movie. 